For more videos, visit for the sake of education.com or support me at patreon.com forward slash Dexter Bells. All right, guys, let's do this very easy problem that says if the roller at A and the pin at B can support a load of 4K and 8K respectively, find the maximum intensity of the distributed load W measured in kilonewtons per meter so that the failure of the supports does not occur. So basically, we have a reaction here at A and a reaction here at B. This will be the vertical reaction and this will be the horizontal reaction. And remember that the reaction at B is equal to the <coughs> square root of the horizontal plus the vertical component. And they're telling us that the maximum each one can have are 4 and 8 respectively. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this distributed blow with an equivalent force of F, which occurs right in the center because it's a rectangular distributed load. Now F is equal to the length of, of the distributed load, which is 4, times the height of the, of the rectangle, which is W, measured in kilonewtons per meter. So I'll start first. So let me erase let me erase the distributed load so now we know that it's been replaced by an equivalent force so now that I took I took care of the distributed load I just got to do what we always do start finding formulas so the first thing I know is this that the sum of the moments at B is equal to zero <coughs> I'm gonna assume clockwise is positive. So we got two moments we created at B. We got the moment created by F and the moment created by A. So the moment created by F turns this lever arm at 90 degrees. And the moment created by A, sorry that's not a very straight line, there we go, turns this lever arm at 90 degrees. So let's find them. The first moment, F is F times the distance, which is 2. This lever arm has a length of 2. It's half of 4. Very easy to find. Now, how do we find the second one, which is, this is minus, and the, sec the second moment is the moment created by A, and it's A times the distance of this very crooked line that I drew for you. To find this, I'm going to use the law cosines because we have a triangle that looks somewhat like this. This one's much better. So this has length of 3 given right here. This has length of 4 given right here. And this angle we also have and we know to be 150 degrees because we know that this angle right here is given right here at 30. And the whole thing is 180, so this angle is 150. Whenever you have two sides and the angle between them, law cosines guys, law of cosines. The law of cosines says that c squared, in this case this is c, is equal to a squared plus b squared, which are the other two sides, minus 2 times a times b times cosine of the angle between them, which is 150 degrees. We got A, we got B, they're 3 and 4, so you just plug them into this formula and then you square root the whole thing to find C, and you're going to get that C is equal to 6.77 meters, of course, because the rest are in meters. 6.77 meters, which means this long arm that I drew is 6.77, and that it, that's what A is turning, creating a moment about B. And all of that is equal to zero. So when you solve for A, you got to plug in 4W for B, 4W from right here. And then when you solve for A, you're going to get that A is equal to 1.18W. The next thing that we know is that we know that the sum of the forces in the X is equal to zero. And as we can see, this A has a Y component, AY and an x component. Let's call it ax. And we know them. Ay and ax. Easy to find because 
we have this angle of 30 degrees which means that this angle right here is also 30 degrees so ax is equal to a sine of 30 and ay is equal to a cosine of 30 so sum of the forces in the x is equal to zero <clears throat> so the forces acting in the x are ax which is a sine of 30 and going towards the left is bx is equal to zero so as you can see bx is equal to a sine of 30 and a sine of 30 we plug in 1.18 w for a and we get that bx is equal to 0.591 w we got one let me draw a line right here <clears throat> Then we know that the sum of the forces in the y is equal to zero. So we got going up, we got ay, which is a cosine of 30 minus f, which is coming straight down, plus by, and that is equal to zero. So by is equal to f minus a cosine of 30. So by is equal to 2.98w. You got to plug in for f, you got to plug in 4w, and for a, you got to plug in 1.18w and just solve. And you get by in terms of the weight. So let me turn the page. Let me leave that there. So the next thing that we need to do is find b, which I told you use this formula. And when you plug in bx and by into that formula, you get that b is equal to 3.03w. So we got b. And we find a before to be 1.18w. And they tell you that the maximum a can be is equal to 4k. And the maximum b can be is equal to 8k so they're both going to give you a weight as you can see so if b is equal to 8k 8k is equal to 3.03 w which means that the weight would come out to be 2.64 kilonewtons per meter that's the weight now if a is equal to 4k 1.18 w then according to this one w is equal to 3.39 kilonewtons per meter so when you have two restrictions like this you got to pick the lowest one so final answer and this one does not work why not because if if w is 2.64 kilonewtons per meter that will put the b at its limit anything higher would break it at B and as you can see if you put it at 3.39 it would break at B so final answer please comment below if you want me to do any problems and I'll be happy to help thank you